Hello love, welcome to Feeling Fridays here on the Libran King. This is where we take a look at messages for the highest and the greatest good of the empath collective and the empath journey, the empath consciousness here on Mama Gaia. Know that if this video has found you for the first time or you have found it, and if you are returning here, that there is something here for you. Thank you for being here, sending you so much love wherever you are. We're gonna get right into it. Remember that these messages are timely, yet timeless. Timely in the sense that we are gonna be tapping into what is going on right now energetic, energetically in this linear time-space continuum here on Mama Gaia, but also timeless in the sense that this is going to reverberate message-wide message wise message wide okay see it's already starting we got a lot of water energy coming in for this reading and anytime that happens please bear with me because i can trip up over my words or really it's more like slur my words um we have got the whale and orca elders here for this message along with the venusians and the venusian galactic council they're kind of here holding space funny enough initially connecting with them but they're basically giving the whale and orca elders the floor here um because i feel that they're going to want to come in later on for a message here but we're starting with a whale and orca elders wanting to bring in simply messages of upliftment those were their specific words and a way for us to recharge our batteries as empaths here on this empath journey right now in this time and space wow okay i'm bringing in the energy of pink himalayan salt and celestite for this reading just take a look at those energies coming through really wanted to emphasize the water element and the water elementals also we are in pisces season now the sun is in pisces this is by the way side note here right pisces being a water sign this is a great time to be working with water energy and water elementals if you feel called to do that what's interesting is they had me holding this they want to talk a little bit here about transmutation and the interaction of energies and also the importance of negative ions so there's kind of like an energetic a message here but also a physical kind of message here with regard to interacting with the elements and the element of water and how it heals and nourishes us as empaths on different levels okay now i'm speaking obviously to those of you who really resonate with the water element, this could also be maybe for some of you a confirmation that you've been seeing a lot of water energy around you. There's definitely, they're confirming that as well with regard to it coming up for you for a reason um, with regard to aiding you in this recharging your batteries into, I'm, I'm just hearing like sighs of ah, like release of peace, of gentleness. As I'm holding this, I can feel that interaction happening between the palm of my hand, the heat from the palm of my hand and the salt melting and in essence, creating almost like a condensation or water quality. They really wanna emphasize here the fact that we have this very primal, this very, and when I say primal, I mean like primordial, this very basic ancient connection to water. Water alchemically being the primordial substance, the prima materia, right? The, um, just like air, we also need water for the physical body to be able to function, okay? And you could say by extension, we need all the elements which we do but there's something very 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 basic about water as there is air okay when we are in gestation this is what they want to remind us of right now when we are in our mother's wombs as human beings we are in liquid we are in water and that is the reason why they really want us to kind of make this connection between that and being prima materia because it is the first 
in essence, what they're saying is kind of element that we are exposed to when we are in the womb, okay? Also, there may be some kind of healing that needs to be done around this. If there is a fear of the water, there might be something connected there to birth. Um, there's so much here. Um, please explore that. Feel free to explore that yourself. I don't want to get too off topic here, but they are also wanting to reiterate here the importance of negative ions. Negative ions being very much available in nature, in forests, and especially near water. And salt, salt lamps creating negative ions in the atmosphere around you. You can kind of, I don't know if any of you, 111 on the clock, 111 on the clock. Um, as I go to say this, I'm going to link the, the, the most recent, I believe it was the soul support message, the last one that we did. I'm going to link it right here right now um, because we did mention 11 in that and it had to do with timelines. So I'm feeling the need to kind of link that here as I speak about this. Um, have you ever noticed how that smells when you have a lot of pink Himalayan salts on? You can smell negative ions in the atmosphere, especially that kind of smell that you get after a rainfall, right? Um, connecting with that elementally. And water elementals also kind of being present in that, which is really interesting because we're, we're you know, Himalayan, it's interesting because salt, you know, they often say like with pink Himalayan salt, with selenite, right? Um, because they have a lot of these properties, um, minerals associated with salt, when they interact with water, they can dissolve and melt, which makes them interestingly enough very attuned to water, okay? And this goes back to salt water and the minerals in our water. I'm, I'm gonna end it there because there's a lot. <laughs> and I could just keep on talking and talking and talking about this. So messages of upliftment, they really want me to keep it simple. Messages of recharging our batteries, I'm gonna be asking through the Healing Waters Oracle. I don't wanna make this message too long. Let's see, let's see if they're gonna, if it's gonna be cool um, in that way, if they're gonna not make it so long. Um, and here I go talking again, blah, blah, blah. Um, and Pamela's mini deck. Okay, so starting with Rebecca Campbell's The Healing Waters Oracle messages for the empath collective messages of upliftment a way for us to recharge our batteries sell key come out of hiding embrace who you really are okay it's interesting because i was just reading about the myths the myth the mythological the stories okay that have been i'm hearing transmuted into myth around the cell keys, okay? But what I'm really, what's really being focused on here is the fact that in some of these stories, two things, there's an element of transmutation, similar to like me holding the, you know, the salt lamp here, the salt, little mini one, um, and the interaction of my heat, the hand to the salt, creating a condensation Cell keys are elementals, they're water elementals, and I believe um, they're connected to the Shetland Islands in Scotland. But what's interesting is that there's myths that we encounter cross-culturally that do have this kind of story about seals turning into humans and back into seals again, right? Or some type of, you know, we get that a lot with mermaids and mermen, the same thing where they are able to transmute, they are able to transfigure their energy, okay? And what's interesting here is there is a focus on that with regard to our own transmutation of energy. And I did get that message before going into this reading with regard to um, taking energies that we are perhaps, specifically energies that are annoying us energies that are aggravating us in some way. This is really, really specific, but things that are just a nuisance to you, a nuisance. Like earlier, there was a truck that was doing some work outside here and I had to delay the reading a bit because it was so loud and it was really starting to 
I could feel it like grating on my nervous system. And I was being directed um, by my guides to transmute those energies into more deeper focus. And they were showing me, they were giving me the image, and I'll share it with you now, of taking this energy and seeing it going through a sieve or some kind of a filter where you are basically, through that filter, transmuting the annoyance of the energy, of the sound, and funneling it into more focus. So what I was doing, basically at the time, while I was getting things ready, I was actually taking that energy and fueling it to allow me to focus even more deeply. That could be a whole other message or lesson that wants to come through, but I'm just bringing that up as a side note because it is connected to this and they did show that to me earlier today and I do feel like it's somehow relevant to this because it's connected to this ability to recharge your batteries in a way, to be able to take all the things that are annoying, seemingly annoying, the things that are a nuisance, the things that perhaps are frustrating you, and transmute those energies. It takes practice is what they're telling me, and to not, to not be discouraged if on the first go you're just like, I have no freaking idea if that even worked. And the thing is, it took like two or three times for me to really experiment with this, you know, and get it going. This one wanted to fall out. The wellspring. What are you thirsty for? Body care. Take a break. Okay. Birth mysteries at the bottom of the deck. What are you being called to create? There's lots of beautiful messages here with regard to expressing yourself, finding ways to do that creatively. Okay. This is one way that you can recharge your batteries. I feel like there's gonna be a lot of personal kind of things to do in this message. It's more about self-care and taking care of yourself and understanding that, that reverberates like out into the collective. Embracing who you really are through this process of creativity, through, they keep on showing me writing or journaling, but they're also showing me anything creative that you can think of that you enjoy doing. This goes back to the inner child as well, what you feel passionate about, the things you love to do for fun, okay? Um, creating time and space, even if it's a 15 minute window every day is how they're showing it to me. They're also showing me you doing this in a sacred space where you bring in protection, you bring in guides, you bring in guidance. Uh, your higher self, right? Connecting to your higher self in order to guide you as to what is the best way for you to do this creatively. What are you being called to create? Asking that question. And specifically asking the question, what am I being called to create that's going to help me recharge my batteries? That's going to help me transmute these energies, these more um, low-fi is how I'm. it's being presented to me because I keep on being reminded of that truck that was outside this morning that was just like this constant hum that was like a mechanical hum. You know, this lo-fi sound, how are you, how can you take those lo-fi energies and transmute them like fuel for the fire is what I'm hearing, which is interesting because we're talking about water here and they're coming back to purification again. And they're reminding me of in my astrology, how water and fire are inherently connected and how when, you know, rituals are done with water, they include fire. It's a Basically, excuse me, how they're presenting it is it's on a spectrum. It's always on a spectrum, which is really interesting. Like the transmutation process of fire, okay? The alchemical process that we often connect with the element of fire, the heat from my hand on this pink Himalayan salt, right? Um, and it creating vapors and creating a, a chemical reaction almost of transmutation. It's almost like simply meditating on that is enough to unlock the power of that. Cooking is another thing that they're bringing to my mind now. Um, when you cook, you're transmuting, right? Those of you who are practicing kitchen witches or witches who do, um, you know, rituals, spells, uh, creation magic with food, right, in the kitchen, 
that's a big thing, right? Um, think of it kind of like that. Like this is how, what we're doing essentially. We're taking things, we're taking certain energies, especially they really want to focus on a lot of us just being annoyed and frustrated right now and taking these energies and transmuting them. Transmuting them. Transmuting them even into self-care is what they're saying. Um, yeah. What are you thirsty for? This goes back to creativity is what they're showing me with this Wellspring card. Take a breath. This could also be some form of breath work that will help you to simply recharge your batteries, okay? I'm going to clarify this now with Pamela's mini deck. They're not directing me to cut the deck at all today and sort of do that. They just want me to shuffle. They want me to go with the flow of it. And now they're being a little... They're being fun about it and cheeky. Look at that. The Empress coming out. Yeah. So much of this is about body care. Embracing who you really are. Coming out of hiding. The Selkies have a very amorous nature as well. Which is being reflected in this Empress card. I feel like I want to read from the book on that one. Because definitely. Creative energies. What are you being called to create? Okay. With this Empress card coming out. These are the Venusians coming through. They're just reminding me of that, right? They really want us to tap into our creative energy for this. There's something about empaths and and creativity. There's some kind of deeper connection there. There's some, there's something there uh, that they really want to bring through for this message. And I'm seeing, they're showing me the sacral center. They're showing me the sacral, the sacral chakra. They're showing me our sexual energy, our life force energy, this deep well of creation that's within each and every one of us they're showing me our body as a sacred temple in that right and how we transmute those energies through that work through work through those sexual energies right they're showing me you know the work that's very much this work of connection of being connected to our energies whoa Interesting. Three of Swords coming out. This is a huge side message right now. King of Cups and this Three of Cups. They all kind of flipped out on the side. None of them really came out in reverse here. This High Priestess at the bottom of the deck in reverse. Okay, so they're giving me a specific nod here, again, to relationships. Surprise, surprise, on the empath journey, right? Wow, they're showing me transmutation of heartbreak, heartache, suffering, sadness. I'm also hearing loss here. They're showing me the Five of Cups as well. And this level of emotional mastery with the King of Cups in transmuting these energies into celebration. This is a very, 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 very specific nod to the difficulties that we have encountered in relationships. Perhaps this frustration that you're feeling is around a relationship. But they're not showing it to me as like a really heavy, difficult, like make it or break it frustration. That's not how they're showing it to me. It's just kind of like an annoyance. Where is that potentially happening in, happening in any relationship right now in your life? And with this level of emotional mastery with this King of Cups, how can you transmute that energy? And the Venusians really want to come through for this now. Okay, here we go. Yep. They're showing me how much more you can open up your heart to your own self-understanding, self-love, self-compassion and feeling like you need to be beyond this frustration, beyond this annoyance. Like, <laughs> like they're showing me basically um, someone as an empath berating themselves for being annoyed by this thing that this person is doing and being like, you know, I should be better than this. This thing shouldn't annoy me. Come on, come on, I should be better than this. <laughs> And they're like, 
this is not this is not what it's about it's not about you being better than this it's about you are a soul having a human experience there is a reason why you're getting annoyed there's a reason why you're getting frustrated identify the reason what is it is it perhaps that you see and they're, they're showing me this coming from like they're showing me this frustration coming from an actual deeper place within each and every one of us that could that could have to do with when you know someone else is doing something that perhaps is not the best thing for them that's the first thing so it is coming from a place of concern or love the second thing they're showing me is your own triggers your own what's that what's being mirrored to you and why where you have to do your own kind of self work on it and it's not about trying to again bypass it it's about actually taking in those energies and being like how can i transmute this how can i celebrate the fact that in every moment that this happens i have an opportunity to further transmute these energies to grow emotionally to transmute those energies to shift something because the emotional mastery like i mean i'm just going to hold these up cuz look at look at this it's like taking the annoyances the grievances these are heavier energies as well okay so this could also be a message of again heavy relationships that we've experienced in the past that we've moved on from right where we see um, us getting triggered, this goes back to the triggered message, where we, where we see ourselves getting triggered by something, annoyed by something, and then we're berating ourselves because we think, oh, I should be better than this. I should be further along in my journey right now. I should be more evolved right now. Yada, 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 okay? These happen for a reason. The triggers happen for a reason. They're not there for you to be like, Oh God, I failed. Everything is crap. I'm doing so shitty, blah, blah, blah. They're not there for that. They're there for you to grow. It's taking that wisdom and putting it into action. It's taking that wisdom and becoming that ultimate transmuter empath, transmuting those energies into this. Because look, it's so cool. I love that we've got a three here and a three here, right? Three and three. We're going from this three of swords to this three of cups. We're going from the energy of heartbreak. And again, they're directing this specifically to our thoughts because this is swords. So it's this energy of thinking, I failed, I've done so badly. I should know by now, I should know better by now and being frustrated by this. It's about transmuting those thoughts into, this is an opportunity for me to grow. This is an opportunity for me to grow, okay? That's what this high priestess is in reverse an opportunity to grow. That's what they're bringing through here. And it's through divine feminine energy, right? With this high priestess in reverse and the empress. And what's really interesting is they are emphasizing here the difference between these divine feminine energies. Because in this case, you need to really feel it. They're showing me more about it being in the body as empaths through this empress here transmuting those energies through that energy of feeling right and they keep on they keep on directing me to this two, this the two they keep on directing me i'll get to that in a second so they keep on directing me here to the high priestess in reverse being how we're going into this in a way where how do i even describe this we're accessing, we're bypassing our intuition on this and we're going straight to the thought form. We're bypassing the intuition on this and we're going straight to some kind of residual programming indoctrination with regard to being an empath and empath consciousness here on the 3D plane in Mama Gaia in the form of I should know better by now. I should be better by now. How, oh my God, how dare I be frustrated by this person? You know, I'm supposed to be, you know, caring. 
that's exactly what this high priestess is in reverse. And the two coming through is the energy of relationships. And we understand and we grow through these things. There is no perfection in terms of that. It is a journey. And it is about the relationship between your wisdom and your learning and then the action you take around that with regard to your own self-understanding and compassion and self-love, okay? Taking care of yourself. I'm going to end with holding up this wellspring. Body care, taking care of yourself, making that a priority, connecting to the element of water. I'm going to bring these two energies in here. As we close out this reading, these beautiful water energies, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to the Venusians, the Venusian Galactic Council, to the energies of the Whale and Orca Elders for coming through for this message, the water and the water elementals, the Selkies coming through. Yeah, they're just like hold up the card. No need to read. If you feel, check, you know, if you're feeling that this is resonating somehow, do a little dive. Should I say pun intended there or no? I don't. Everything is a deep dive for me. Um, do a little dive, like the Selkie, into the stories around the Selkies, okay? If that resonates for you. All right. I thank you so much for being here, sharing your time and your energy with me in this space, and I'm sending you so much love wherever you are, in love and liberation, always.